Look at that. Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here in Vancouver, Washington with former OHS student to 96, Michael Howes. All right, well, Michael's going to show us uh, some of the different applications of the physics that uh, we learn in high school physics and how he's using them every single day. Every day. Every day. What was happening is my, my little microphone that might be in your cell phone or a headset, it's very small and very sensitive to vibration. Well, that was sitting right here in my test fixture, um, which I, I think you can see just fine. Um, this speaker generates a lot of vibrations, as you know, something that moves will do. Uh, well, vibrations were get coupling directly into the microphone and uh, screwing up my measurements. Oh, we don't like that. Nope. All right, so you added this material, which is sorbethane. Oh, yeah. Which uh, is something that you uh, played with a little bit in high school. Oh, yeah. As I recall. In Dr. Altman's physics class, we I learned about this type of material. And so uh, uh, you, you found some of this, and the vibration hits this material. This doesn't vibrate very well. Nope. And so it doesn't transfer the vibration through this carbon rod, and so you effectively isolated uh, this from the vibration. Yep, correct. We have a carbon fiber rod, which in itself helps reduce vibrations. So we reduce vibrations here. Any residual that carries through is then terminated at this one. Okay. A speaker works on this basic principle. There's a, uh, a solenoid here, which, what do they call that? A voice coil. A voice coil. This is a voice coil. And it, it vibrates this material, which in turn vibrates the air. This is an electromagnet, and it interacts with a permanent magnet. Okay, these are speakers that they build here, and uh, they have to test them. And, uh, and the way they do it is by taking them apart. They have the two parts of the speaker. They have the part of the speaker that moves and there's a coil of wire on it. And then they have a permanent magnet on the other side. And they can measure the forces needed on this coil of wire to push it through the range of motion they're trying to achieve. The speaker, what's this called? The, uh, that would be the cone or the, the diaphragm. Okay, so there's a force that moves the diaphragm. What's that force equal to? All right, F is equal to B capital I L. So this force is equal to the strength of the magnetic field times the uh, times the current running through the coil times the, the length, length of, wire. of the wire in the coil. All right. All right. The dimensional analysis of, will be uh, uh, um, the magnetic field strength is teslas, current is amps, and length, of course, would be in meters. Now a tesla is a newton per amp meter times amps, times meters, units of force are newtons. The dimensions work.